with y'all it's Jesse and today I come at you with a video that is uh yes it's a gaming video but it's also gonna be a little spiel video about um kind of my background and how I got to this point in my life where I wanted to do a gaming channel so with that being said let's dive into this Choose I'm going to do with and I tell it wow okay I'm gonna do assassin because he's my lowest level one I have them all around level 10 so into the background. Many people have probably dropped by my channel and have seen a lot of music covers, and that's because that is originally what I like doing. It was something that kind of got me through high school just because, um, you know, when I was in high school, which was, oh god, help me, 2008 to about 2011, 2012, that was like when social media was becoming really big. You know, I think I started Twitter in 2009, I believe. I think December of 2009. And, um, oh, I didn't even realize he was right here. Good job! And, um, so yeah, that was the height of all of it. And I was huge into social media, and, like, once that was happening, I was really big into, like, following artists and musicians and stuff because I loved you know, watching them perform online, I loved watching live streams, I was into it. And so there was um, a time in my life where I really wanted to learn how to play different instruments. I did marching band in high school, and that was my life because I sucked at sports. <laughs> so uh, I was a big old band geek, as you'd like to call me, and, you know, I, I was involved in music for a long time. And I wanted to see if it would be possible if I could self-teach myself, you know, any other instruments. So I ended up learning guitar. I ended up learning keyboard. I ended up learning drums. I had everything. It was nuts. Um, and, you know, as I was self-teaching myself these instruments, I'm like, man, you know, I don't know what I want to do for a career. I really don't. And I, I kept trying to think about it because I really didn't like thinking I wanted to go to college like university terrified me and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't know if community college would be worth it um so here I am self-teaching myself these instruments and I mean I couldn't read music for those instruments I usually would just find videos and just try to mimic them just based off the visuals and that was fun it was really fun and so after I graduated, I ended up going to community college because that was kind of like the only thing I could find, you know, that could suit my needs at the moment. And my mom said, as long as you have a job and you're going to school, you can live here rent free. And I said, all right, let's do it. And it was hard because my focus after high school, the last thing I wanted to do was more school, you know. <laughs> and... Um, so, in the midst of school, I was about, it was pretty close to the end of my first year as a freshman, and um, I was um, looking online, you know, posting my videos one day, and I saw this contest, and I was like, um, this is crazy, what is this? And so basically what you had to do is you had to send in about a minute long video talking about you know, what's what's a dream? What's a dream that you wish to live or pursue? And um, once you submitted your video, it was available for anybody to see. So you kind of had to be careful with what you said, because not only were their judges looking at it, but anybody who wanted access to it could see it. And so, you know, most people said, I want to sing. I want to be a singer. I want to be famous, you know? Then you had your handful of people who said, like, oh, I want to model, you know, I want to play basketball or sports, or, you know, I want to act, or, you know, just a bunch of that little stuff here and there. And me, I just, like, I want to be a musician, because I'm, like, I feel like I'm pretty versatile. I play a lot of instruments. I don't, I like singing, but I didn't do a lot of vocal covers, just because I'm very, very insecure <laughs> about my voice. And I mean, I've gotten a little better with it, but it 
still makes me nervous to sing in front of people. It drives me nuts. <laughs> and I wish I didn't feel like that because it's not that I don't like singing. I do. Aw, oh, shoot. That's fine. Because I do like singing. It's just when it comes to the point where I have to sing in front of people, I just kind of bunch up and I shut down and it makes me really nervous. And all of a sudden it feels like, you know, I have 10 million pairs of eyes on me and he thinks I suck. And I hate feeling like that. So I was just like, you know, I'll, I'll just do musician because I like playing instruments and, you know. And so I tried to make it pretty humble. I, in the video, I was saying like, you know, I really would love this opportunity, and I appreciate you guys, you know, having the chance to be able to enter this contest, it means a lot, blah blah blah. And so, videos were coming in, coming in, coming in. And I guess I didn't realize, I didn't tell you what you win, huh? <laughs> so, this contest, if you won, you would get a celebrity mentorship. What does that entail? Well. It depends on who you are and what your dream is. So obviously, if you're a singer, you're probably going to get mentored by a celebrity singing, you know, giving you tips. If you're a basketball player, you're going to get taught the tips on how to, you know, take over the court and stuff. I don't play sports, so I don't really know how that works. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, you are guaranteed a celebrity mentorship. And they had a lineup of different celebrities, and if you won, you didn't know who you were going to get. It was all a mystery, I guess you could say. And if you won, it was going to be a surprise, and you weren't going to figure it out until you got there. So here I am, daydreaming about this contest, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I swear, I made the greatest video. I didn't seem like I was begging for anything, because there were a lot of people who were like, I need this opportunity to succeed. It's the only thing that's ever going to get me far in life. And I just thought that to be kind of bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to live if you don't win this contest. Like, I very much understood that. But some people just came off very desperate. And I did not like that at all. Um, so yeah, and that's why I tried to make sure that I was watching videos and making sure that I didn't come off as cocky or, like, I need this or anything like that and so about a month went by and I'm like you know I I don't know how many people they're choosing but um it's not looking good and I'm like you know there's a lot of contests out there you know it's pretty rare to win any of these things I really wasn't expecting anything at that point I was really bummed but I just remember telling all of my friends I'm like, I can't do this dope contest and you know, what if I won? What if I won? And I kept saying that. What if I won? You know, you never know. And, um, so, yeah, a month went by, and it was a Sunday morning. I got a call, and they're like, hey, um, so we're from the company of contests that I entered, and we think your video is great. We've seen some of your YouTube covers, and I'm like, oh my god, my god see my YouTube covers and uh, we think you're really good and we would like you to join us so call us back and at this point I'm crying I am sobbing for hours hours and I just run to my mom's room and at this point my mom's thinking like the cat died or something and I'm like no I'm like mom you don't get it I won this contest I won this giant nationwide contest and they want me I don't know why but they want me and I'm like, guess what? We get to we get to fly to LA and at this point my mom's like jaw dropped because she's like, um LA. <laughs> so she's thinking it's a fraud at this point because like like who does this happen to that you know, you know? And um so yeah, and then when I called them back, they're like, Alright, you got you got ten days to prep for this. And it's going to be crazy, and it's going to be insane, but you're going to love it. You're going to love every minute of it. I'm like, okay. So, there's a lot of prepping that went into it. I had to go and buy outfits, made sure they didn't have logos. They couldn't be red, they couldn't be white, they couldn't have stripes. They couldn't, you know, have wording, and they just had to be plain Jane. And, like, I'm already really awkward with the way I dress. I mean, not 
now. I guess it was more so when I was younger. I was just very picky with clothes. And I mean, I was 18 at the time. I'm now 26, so it wasn't that long ago. It was like seven years ago, though. It was still a long time. Oh, why can I never make that swim? Oh, no, it matters anyway. I gotta go back. <laughs> but anyway, so I won this contest. And obviously, as you can tell from my thumbnail, that you probably know the celebrity I was matched with. And it is all recorded. It was all recorded, and they made it into about a 10 minute video. And it's. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> But I literally got to spend all day with Demi Lovato. It was nuts. It was nuts. I, I, I literally have no other way to say it other than it was nuts. Um, I kind of had to, you know, they brought me to a rehearsal space in Beverly Hills to meet with her, and I can't remember the name of it, but basically every celebrity that you can think of has rehearsed there. And, um... Uh, so, like, Bruno Mars' stuff was in the hallway because he was actually coming in the day after me and Demi. And I was like, oh, Jesus, like, that's insane. <laughs> and so, basically, what the day entailed was, um, you know, so she surprised me, and I was like, oh, holy crap, this is insane. And then over the course of the day, I got a new wardrobe. Her makeup artist did my makeup. Um, I got to play for her keyboard slash bass player. I got to play for her guitar player. Like, I did things that I never thought I was capable of. And I basically did it all out of fear because I knew if I didn't, um, it was going to be an embarrassment for me. And... The one thing that over trumps anxiety is fear. And at that point, I just kind of felt like I was on autopilot. I didn't even know what I was doing because I was just, I had this tunnel vision. And I just kept going down the path that they kept wanting me to go down. And by the end of the day, it's like, I almost couldn't even believe I did half the stuff I did. And I like, I had an assistant. I had crew people who are always asking like, oh do you want us to go do a coffee run like just stuff like that and I was just like holy cow is this like what celebrities like is this what they live like and I mean I was just getting a glimpse that's not even like what they deal with full time I thought you know I'm like is this going to be my new life I didn't know how big this contest was at the time and um I thought it was going to be the thing that led me to a future career. And at the time, there was a lot of stuff I was trying to figure out because, like I said, I was right out of high school. Um, I was still in the closet. <laughs> um, I was trying to figure that stuff out. And it was really nerve-wracking. And, um, you know, I feel like the contest did help with a lot of things, but I think if there's one thing it did help with, it was helping me figure out what I did want to do with my life. And as much as I love music, it's not the thing that puts me on cloud nine. You know, I feel like there's a lot of work that goes behind it. And I feel like if I was overworked, to a certain degree that I wouldn't be able to function. You know, I, like I said, I literally had Demi Lovato with me for a day. And not even just a day. Like, after that video was filmed, I got to do more. They flew me back a month later, and I was literally in L.A. for 24 hours to do a charity event with her. I got to do an interview with her for about 50 kids and their parents who were either part of this charity, helped run the charity, I don't even remember. And it was insane because all of a sudden all of these kids, that are about my age, you know, at the time, they came up to me and they're like, oh my god, you're Jessie. Or, or like, they would point at me and whisper like, oh my god, it's her. 
and I'm thinking like, what the hell? Like, why are these people freaking out about me? I'm nobody. <laughs> I am literally a person who won this by chance. And what I love more than like being a musician in that setting was just having people appreciate me because I feel like I've never really been appreciated like that before and I mean I don't really blame anybody because I was a very shy kid you know I hated people taking pictures of me I hated being in the spotlight I don't I didn't like having the center attention revolve around me I hated it and so I feel like since I wasn't around it a lot that once it was finally hitting me I'm like you know, this is nice. You know, I, I, I never pictured it to be like that, ever. And I felt like I was starting to more fall in love with the concept of being, um, you know, with people actually recognizing me and people validating who I am than, like, the music itself. Because, obviously, if you watch the video below, you can't really hear me at all. You can't really hear me play when I'm playing at the end. And, um, you know, whatever. That's whatever. I don't really care. But, I mean, the only thing I did in that video that was, I guess, um, uplifting and stuff was I faced my fears. But like I said, I didn't face my fears because I was like, yeah, I've accomplished this. I did it out of, I faced a fear out of fear. Not a, I, I don't know like, even how to explain that because like my anxiety is so strong sometimes that like I can't function and um, yeah so I guess like I said I was falling more in love with the idea that people were appreciating me and so once that contest was over people were starting to find my social media and it was kind of nerve-wracking because, like, I didn't have my social media anywhere for people to find. People just found me. And they started trying to DM me and, you know, they started trying to use me because they're like, oh my god, you're best friends with Demi Lovato. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm like, I don't have her number. I don't have any contact with her. I don't have any special treatment. And so, I felt used because people, at the end of the day, didn't even want me for me. You know, they wanted me because I was affiliated with somebody who was famous. And I didn't appreciate that. And, I mean, I still don't, obviously. I mean, I went from about 200 followers on... Twitter to about 2,500, um, was pretty nuts. <laughs> um, people, like I said, just kept tweeting at me, and I mean, there were some really genuine people, but there was also a lot of fake people. And once that video was up, the one in the link underneath isn't from the company, because they were only allowed to keep it up for a year under their channel because that was I think in the contract but um, obviously some second party posted it and I was I was able to find it and I'm able to share it so it makes me happy but that original video had over a million views and that's how popular it was and then the crazy thing is I was on commercials I was on ABC Family I was on MTV and I think I was on one more channel but I can't remember I don't know, I'm going the wrong way. I can't remember what other channel it was, but I had commercials on TV. And literally, I was, at the time, I was working in fast food. And some girl came in, and she looked at me really funny. And she's like, oh my god, you're from that commercial on TV. And I just look at her, and I'm like, how do you know that? I'm like, I'm like, I look like trash. I'm like, how did you recognize me? She's like, I don't know. She's like, something in me just said it was you. And I'm like, what? And she's like, why do you live here? 
And I'm like, what do you mean? Why do I live here? Because, I mean, I never moved out of the state. And she's like, well, you're famous now. Like, you can go do whatever you want. And I'm like, well, I'm not famous. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be famous just because of this video. I'm like, I didn't even get to show what I could actually do and what I was actually capable of. I did everything out of force. Not in a bad way, because obviously I am very grateful for the opportunity and I will hold it near and dear to me for the rest of my life. But it wasn't genuine. And I hate saying that, but like I said, my fear gauge is so strong that like it'll make sure it does everything in its power. So I'm not embarrassed. Yeah, and so everybody had these expectations, like I was famous. And I'm like, no, you know, I'm just an everyday person, and I always have been. And because of that, I felt like I had these standards where I wasn't allowed to do anything else but music covers and stuff. I felt like this is what people see me as, and this is the path I have to take now. And so I'd, you know try to always listen to the radio and try to think of what songs were popular at the time to get the most views and that's where 400 of my subscribers came from it, it came from that contest and so genuinely this channel only has well there's 413 right now so about 13 genuine people that, who, who want to watch gaming videos and the thing is, it's like, I didn't want to start a whole new gaming channel because, I mean, first of all, that requires making a whole new email, and I'm not about that. But I want to see my growth. I think that's really important for me because I... I shit on myself a lot because I feel like I can be doing more. And I don't think that's what's important. I think what's important is seeing where you were and where you've come from and seeing how much that has changed over time because when I look at it like that it means so much more and it's just you know and I wanted to make a gaming channel because this is what makes me happy this is what makes me happy you know I don't feel forced to post these videos I post these on my own time when I feel like it and I am legitimately excited to, you know, put these videos out, regardless how many people are watching. There's only 13 <laughs> right now. And, like, I don't care how many people see this. I'm like, yeah, I obviously want to post on YouTube because I want to connect with people like I did back then. I felt like that was so important to me because... I still wanted people to look up to me as a positive role model, not necessarily because I'm affiliated with somebody that's famous. And I mean, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten that contest now, which is fine. But I feel like there's still subscribers who are probably inactive on my account. And it probably looks a little misleading. Like, I have 400 subscribers I have just earned, but I've only had this channel for about two months. Um... But, you know, I, I want to do this genuinely because I love doing this. And, you know, I never really knew that this was a thing you could do <laughs> until I started watching, like, people who are on Vine. Yes, Vine. Who were turning their Vine accounts into YouTube uh, channels and stuff. And the first Viner... I ever watched was Daz Black, and I don't know if anybody knows him, but he is hysterical. I love that dude. He is so funny. His vines made me crack up, and they will forever make me crack up. And like, I think I was probably one of the few thousand first followers he ever had. Oh, darn it. But um. That dude's got over a million subscribers now, and I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> He's done really well for himself. And, you know, I'm not doing this for money, because I already have a good job. I don't, you know, I don't need to 
try to figure something else out for money. But I'm genuinely doing this because I've always wanted a go-to hobby. And I feel like I've struggled to find that, too. I used to do that with music and stuff, but so, it just... My head just can keep the concentration. Like, it, like I've always wanted it to. I feel like I'm slapping with my words sometimes. But that's more so because I'm distracted because I'm playing this and talking at the same time and I'm not very good at that. I apologize. <laughs> I want people to be patient with me and I don't want people to come at me and be like, yo, what the hell, I thought you were in the music. And it's like, you know, people are allowed to change their mind and do what makes them happy. And I think people fail to see that. I feel like, for example, when people, or like even bands, like when they come out with new music, it's like they expect the artist to stay the same and make the same kind of music because that's what they originally fell in love with. And it's like, you know, that's not it because everybody has to evolve. I mean, look at Justin Bieber. Jesus, that kid has... Like, you know, he's, he went from like a girl heart bobbed, heart throb, heart throb, to, you know, being a little punk ass bitch. <laughs> and now all of a sudden he's a Christian dude. Like, I mean, I know Christian is, or Christianity has always been close to him, even though he hasn't been the best Christian out there. <laughs> But, like, you know, he's getting back into his faith, and obviously his music is a little different than it was. Um, and that's okay, like, you know, you should love the artist for who they are. I mean, sure, if their content changes, it's whatever, but that doesn't change who they are. I mean, if it, is, if it does change who they are, it's for the better. I'd like to hope. But yeah, um, I just kind of wanted to make a video talking about, you know, why I'm here. And I feel like a lot of YouTubers are pretty humble. And that's, oops, that's what I really enjoy about the community. Is because, I mean, you know, there's probably a handful who are pretty full of themselves. But for the most part, I think they, oh shoot, they're in a lot better uh, place than, oh, that's fine. They're in a lot better place than, like, celebrities, like singers and actors, because I think one thing that also scares me is the fact of, the like, the amount of pressure that celebrities have. With that being said, I mean, look at my own mentor that I had. Look at the trials and tribulations she's faced in the last few years. She was knocking at death's door because she overdosed. And that scares the shit out of me. It's like, yeah, okay, she struggles with mental health. That's fine, but so do I. What? Oh, man. Looking at Demi Lovato, like, when there's a couple of times that I was with her during the mentorship day and during other, um, excuse me, interactions we had, um, you know, one of the things she told me was that you're worthy and you shouldn't feel less than worthy because you know you may have not have gone through as horrible things as some people and all that stuff and I literally when I was 18 I got I don't know if you can see that it says worthy and I got that because of her and it meant a lot and then when I found out that you know she almost died we all do want to uh, is that a good idea though? Let's do a quick play. Let's do a bronze. It's gonna be easy, but that's fine. <laughs> but, like, you know, it doesn't make me have a lot of faith in celebrities when they can't even keep up to their own standards. You know, they're telling people, stay strong, you know, whatever, whatever, and they can't even do it themselves. And it makes me nervous because I don't want to live a life where I'm far away from home because work consists of performing for other people. And you know, that's when I was younger, I thought that was the greatest thing ever because I was sick of my family at the time and 
you know, getting praise from people who didn't even know me and people I didn't know. I thought that would be great. I'm like, that's, that's not discovered that all how it works. A lot of those people struggle. Look at all of the actors and singers who have died but failed themselves with OD in the recent years because of how much struggle they have. And they fail to let people in. And I feel like me being the people pleaser that I am, that I would probably get to a point where it wouldn't be a good road to go down. And that's, that's scary. I don't like thinking about that. You know, if, if there's something I want to do that I love, I don't want it to be me being away from the people I love the most. It scares the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There's, I guess there's a lot to talk about in that sense because I feel like people would disagree and be like, you know, it's, it all depends on who you are, who your support team is, and that's true. But at the same time, if you're not willing to let people in, they can't figure it out by themselves, you know. You're going to have to be a little bit open because, like I said, some of the celebrities who kill themselves. Obviously, people didn't know. People put on a fake smile. And I feel with, you know, people who are famous, I feel like that's too common. And that's not good. Oh, I see. I mean, to be honest, I haven't really had anybody ask me about that Demi experience in a long time, but I remember when I was like right in the middle of it, I had people I feel like didn't like that side of me, and it wasn't necessarily because I thought I was being selfish or anything, it's just I posted about it all the time and how grateful I was just because like like, I never have anything exciting happen in my life. Like, I barely even go on vacations. So it's like, to have, to go from nothing to everything in the blink of an eye, like, it was just such a different feeling. And it's hard to know how to perceive that. And I think it's even scarier if you're, like, putting, like, somebody who was, like, Justin Bieber's age when he got famous and, like, putting him in the limelight all of a sudden, like... You don't know what he's going to do. And especially at a young age, it's like, you're going to teach him, you know, all, like, all the ways of how celebrities live and stuff. And I think that's kind of dangerous for kids to see. Because it influences them at a young age, and that's why I feel like he rebelled the way he did. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I hit that right on the head. Um... But I guess the last thing I want people to think is me talking about that. Like, I'm not using that because I want views. I just want people to genuinely know why I created or recreated this channel because, you know, I mean, your past is your past. And obviously this is the past of this channel and I'm not going to lie about that. You know, I want people to know where I came from and, you know, know the reasons why I am the way I am. I think that's one of the best things you can do is be honest and open to the people who are watching you because obviously they're committing their time to, you know, check you out. And I think that's admirable that people think of me having good content and sometimes I don't believe that just because I'm obviously starting fresh. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't have the greatest quality things. I had a DSLR camera, but it kind of died. <laughs> it's not the battery, I think it's the lens or the actual body, because when you try to take a picture, you can see waves. And so I was going to use that originally to record all my content, but it's just fried and I'm going to need something better. I don't know what kind of camera yet, but I would like to get, you know, a fairly decent one. Right now, I am using 
a $35 webcam that I got because it was the best thing I could find. And, you know, my laptop that I'm also using is a 2013 MacBook Pro, which is not bad, but I mean, like, it overheats pretty fast. And even as I'm speaking right now, my computer is tweaking. <laughs> and I'd like to uh, build my own PC in the future because, um, you know, just for work purposes and also for gaming because that's originally how I started gaming. Excuse me. Oh, you're not a bad guy. I started gaming more so on um, a PC. I mean, I started on PlayStation 1, I guess, if you really want to get technical. But, um, the first PC game I really ever got into when I, I was 11, and it was a rated M game, and it was called City of Heroes. And the reason I played that game was because my dad was a beta tester for that game, and he worked really closely with some of his friends on that game. And basically, it's kind of like DC Universe Online. It's really similar. And basically what you did is, so there's City of Heroes and then there's City of Villains. So depending which one you wanted to do, I like Heroes better to be honest. Villains is fun, but like, being a hero is just dope. <laughs> and um, so yeah, basically what you did is you customized your character and then you would have like different, I don't know if you'd want to call them leaders or teachers or stuff. And, oh, that's blinding. And they'd have missions for you, and then you'd have to do these missions, and, um, you know, you'd level up, you'd get powers, and then, like, some of the powers, like, you got to pick, like, if you wanted to be a brute, if you wanted to be a blaster, if you wanted to work with knives, if you wanted to, you know, those kind of things. And once you got to certain levels and stuff, you could get extra powers, like, oh, I want to be able to fly, or, oh, I want to be able to super jump, or... Oh, shoot. Oh. Yes. But yeah, we got to pick a whole bunch of stuff. And it was fun. And as of right now, the servers are um, no more. The game is done. It's very sad. <laughs> but I played that game religiously, and I only had it at his house, so I could never play it at home because I didn't have a computer that was capable. But anyway, that's kind of my first PC game story, and I've wanted to play PC games for so long, but I just, I've never had the money, and that's why I kind of want to build my own PC, because I think it's a little cheaper than just buying, like, an Alienware, which is, like, two grand. You know, I want, like, I don't want a laptop. I have a laptop in my life. I want something beefy, something that can pull the charge, obviously. <laughs> Hold on. The good stuff. And I do have friends who have built their own PCs and they're willing to help me and I'm very grateful for that because um, I wouldn't know what else I'd be doing. I'd probably break it. <laughs> I know <laughs> that was a lot of rambling about just, you know, a lot of where I came from and stuff and whatnot, but I, you know, I want to be genuine with people and I want people to know where I come from, the things I've experienced, and I want to be raw and open. I mean, I don't have to share everything, but I at least want people to realize that, like, this channel has meant a lot to me because it obviously started me off really well, even if it wasn't what I wanted to do in the end. But I am very glad that in the process of everything that's happened over the last seven years that I have figured it out, and I really, really enjoy doing these videos like because like I said it doesn't feel like a job it feels like a hobby and it's something that I genuinely want to do like all the time <laughs> and this is probably the perfect year for it because once the PS5 comes out there's going to be more games dropping and I'm planning on getting a PS5 hopefully when it releases I am going to go everywhere I can to try to find a system because I have been eyeballing that thing so hard <laughs> And yes, I am a PlayStation person. I Xbox is fine, but I prefer PlayStation. So don't hate on that. If people do want more insight of the stuff that I went through, uh, you know, feel free to ask me. I'm not going to hate on anybody for it. 
just know that I don't really have contact with a lot of those people that I was affiliated with. I do not have contact with her either. So don't ask for anything because I don't have it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it was a part of my life that I genuinely 100% loved with every every fiber of my being. I don't know. I keep tripping up on my words, but um, you know, I don't take it for granted. And as much stress as it caused me, it's given me a lot of joy too. I found some of my closest friends because of it. So, um, you know, I don't want to erase that part of my life, but I'm glad it's led me to where I am now, um, hobby-wise and career-wise. I mean, it's kind of nuts. Hopefully, if you stick around on Friday, because that's what I am aiming for, I am going to have a new series up, and it's going to be fun, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be... Um, a little spooky, if I'm saying so myself, although it's gonna be right as, you know, Halloween's exiting, October's exiting, and we're getting into winter. You know, we're gonna get out of the spooky theme, but I still want to keep it alive because I didn't really do it much justice. Sure, clicker's scary, but you know, not as scary as this is gonna be, so hopefully I shall see y'all in the next video.